Stephen Hawkins is apparently betting that the LHC is not going to find the Higgs boson. Do you think he's going to lose? I think if the Higgs boson is there to find, then it will find it. So I bet even odds that if it's there, they will find it. even odds it'll find it. Now, it's one thing to build a big ex experiment and look for something that you predict will be there. That's exciting. If we discover it, there'll be Nobel Prizes all around. What's even more intriguing is if it's supposed to be there and you don't find it. That's more fun because that was my next question. That's, that's, well, that's, that's the funnest thing ever. There's this misconception held by the public, and I think led by journalists, dare, dare I say, that scientists just like sitting back in their chair, legs up on the table, basking in some deep understanding of the universe, but that nothing could be farthest from the truth. We are active research scientists, are on the frontier between what is known and unknown. We bask in our ignorance, because it's the ignorance, the zone of ignorance is where discoveries come from. So you're not making discoveries unless you are, you are flat-footed standing in a field of ignorance. And some of the best discoveries to come out of fields of ignorance are those that, have to, that force us to readjust prior understandings of the universe. And often when you do that, the tree shakes and new relationships reveal themselves. Other things that had been left unexplained for so long all of a sudden become understood. And so, maybe the frontier of particles physics need a, needs a tree shaking. Mm -hmm. So, but in either way, it would be exciting, in either case. Who would you rank as the three greatest discoverer scientists of the last 50 years, Richard Feynman is here? 50 years? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, they would have worked within the last 50 years. Yes. Yeah, certainly Hawking. I'd put Hawking up there. What you want to look for in a, in, a, in a great scientist is, yes, you want a great discovery, sure. But the greatest among the scientists are those that keep discovering and keep innovating. And they're not just the, the flash in the pan Nobel laureate. I look for the ones that, are, that keep challenging paradigms and keep advancing our understanding of the world. And so uh, definitely Hawking is up there. And although I put him a very distant to, compared to like Isaac Newton and Einstein, wow. but they're not in the last 50 years. So definitely he's up there. By the way, I think he's placed higher by the press and by the public than he has actually earned mm -hmm. in the following way. No matter what comes out of his mouth, people go, the, the microphone's in front of his face and they come, Hawking says, you know, I, I, when my phone is ringing off the hook on any one morning, I said, okay, what did Hawking say yesterday? <laughs> okay, well, yesterday he said there might be life elsewhere on other planets, mm -hmm. and if we greet them, they might be hostile. And so people say, Hawking has a new theory that there might be life, <laughs> well, we've we'll been thinking this since War of the Worlds, you know, hostile aliens, come on now. So people are not thinking that maybe Hawking is just offering perspectives that people need to reflect upon, not that he studied hard with his equations and came up with a new theory. So. There needs, some there needs to be some buffering there. Uh, Hawking, I'd put at the top, and I'm a little biased towards the physical sciences sure. here, uh, understandably, perhaps. And uh, Feynman, definitely uh, up there. They would be the top two. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, I would say Charlie Towns for inventing the concept of the laser. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't thought of him, but you're right. Oh, laser, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what's interesting about the laser? It's sensing it's going on meteorology. It's it's the it's the gift that keeps on giving. When he when he when he wrote down the mechanism that would become the laser, he's not think he's not thinking to himself, this would be great for barcodes. <laughs> this is not what he's thinking. Right? <laughs> so so that was good. I would say um, uh, Shockley and Bardeen, who were socially controversial people, they had some so eugenics infused ideas about mm -hmm. their own genetics. Uh, but the good thing about science is you can praise a discovery, even if the people have odd or unusual or even reprehensible mm -hmm. uh, social agendas. But nonetheless, uh, they, they were active. They basically birthed the modern electronics revolution with the 
transistor and other related discoveries. I, I put them high on the list just in terms of uh, how much of society pivots mm -hmm. on what they have contributed. Discovery of the CMB is, was, someone would have done that anyhow? Oh yeah, uh, no that's good. The, the CMB that was predicted to be there right. and so you want to give credit where people thought it up enough to get someone else to then design the experiment to measure it. And the, uh, so the, the, the cosmic microwave background or the cosmic background radiation more broadly mm -hmm. described, uh, that had several satellites that were designed to measure it, they measured it, and there's hundreds in, of engineers behind that, and there's some key scientists who are at the head of that who sort of led the mission and led the design of it. And some Nobel Prizes were awarded mm -hmm. for it as well. Um, uh, so, sure, sure, I'd, I'd, I'd put them up there. Uh, that would be, uh, there, there's, in, in the recent Nobel Prizes, John Mather is one who shared the Nobel Prize with George Smoot mm -hmm. for the measurement of, the, the refined measurement of the cosmic uh, background radiation. A Nobel Prize was given to the very first measurement of it, and that was... Arno Penzias and, and Robert Wilson, both employees of Bell Laboratories uh, back in the 1960s. Well, the question just popped in my mind. How big is the universe? Is it infinite? I mean, the public, I think, thinks, you know, it's 13.7 billion in each direction. Yeah, to, it's, it's, it's that distance to our horizon. Right. Now, beyond our horizon, nobody knows at all. And the funny thing about science and math is, or let me say astrophysics, the funny thing about astrophysics is that if you have no reason to think it's one size or another, for now just say it's infinite. Because you don't have to defend that. Exactly. If it's bigger than 13.7 billion years and I think it's 22 and a half billion, okay, what's your reason for that? I have no reason. <laughs> I, I have no way to judge why it should be 20. So, fine. So throw it out to infinity until we have some other way to think about it. So the universe could, in fact, be infinite, uh, not because we have data to suggest, but because we have no other reason to think anything else. Great, great answer. To <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Very, well, very much. Excellent.